So here we go today with another video. We've got this one on the heart today. Uh, some people have been asking, hey man, I got a heart exam coming up. Can you help me out? I got you covered right here. Uh, this is one of my little portable models. Um, kind of reminding you of something that many me may have uh, loaned me or something. But no, it's actually a little better more accurate size than some of the models you probably use in your lab usually heart models that we order are enormous this guy's a lot smaller and uh, I've got his pocket size friend over to the side that we'll take a look in just a moment but when you're learning the heart one of the first things you gotta understand is you have got to get rid of the Valentine's Day uh, misnomer so, you know Valentine's Day has taught us what a heart supposedly looks like OK, in quotations, but that's not what a heart really looks like. This is more realistic. And if we were looking at an anterior view of a person's thoracic cavity, the heart would be sitting in their chest just like this with the point or the apex. Remember, apex actually means a peak like a mountain peak, the apex of a mountain. The peak of the heart is here. So also, as we look closely, we'll see the left auricle which is a fat pad that's resting uh, uh, against the heart and then we've got the right auricle which is resting on the other side of the heart both of those are sitting on top of the atria of the heart sometimes people look at this and they're saying well wait a minute why do you start with the auricle first I start with the auricle to remind myself that this is the left side of the heart and this is the right side of the heart and more importantly that it's never my left and right but it's the left and the right of the patient. So this is the left side of the heart. This is the right side of the heart. Some other structures that should stand out to you immediately is this big blue pipe thing sticking out the top. This is the pulmonary trunk. And the pulmonary trunk is responsible for carrying deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs. Um, it doesn't take now you got to ask yourself this magical question. Well, wait a minute. OK, so it's one pulmonary trunk, but I've got two lungs. So how, how does one pulmonary trunk get blood to two lungs? Well, that's simple. The pulmonary trunk splits into two different directions into a left and into a right pulmonary artery. So you've got a left pulmonary artery or a group of pulmonary arteries, uh, left pulmonary arteries. And then you have the right pulmonary arteries going to the left and right lungs respectively also as you look closely you'll notice this little red thing the smokestack popping out the top this red structure of course is the aorta uh, this part of the aorta would be the ascending aorta ascend to go up so the blood that's leaving the left side of the heart is oxygenated bright red passing up out of the aorta and on to the rest of the body did you know that 20 percent of the oxygenated blood that comes out of your aorta every time your heart pumps is going straight to your brain your brain is pretty greedy but I mean you can't blame it it does need lots of oxygenated blood at all times uh, another thing that you should point out and notice on the heart is you notice this blue stack here and this blue one right here these two are what we call the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava now, this is something that uh, people get mixed up sometimes because they see these three pipes and they're like, well, wait a minute, what's going on? What's happening here? The superior vena cava is draining all the deoxygenated blood from uh, your upper body. So everything from the diaphragm on up, your chest cavity, your, your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your head, your brain, all that deoxygenated blood is passing and draining into the uh, superior vena cava and then the inferior vena cava is draining all of the blood deoxygenated blood from below your diaphragm so you know everything from the abdominal cavity uh, your legs and everything that's coming up through here people ask all the time why is it that on all the heart models the inferior vena cava is cut off it just doesn't make any sense well, the reason why is because if you were looking at this inside of a person or even inside of a, a, a an anatomy model, you'll notice that the heart is literally sitting on top of the diaphragm. There is a uh, you'll notice that there's a, a hole that passes through the diaphragm that the inferior vena cava is passing through. 
when I get around to making one of these videos with the whole body and just a video that goes through all the organs of the body, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, and you'll we'll talk about how um, some people are prone to get hernias at that particular opening in the diaphragm where the inferior vena cava is supposed to pass through. So um, two more things that we left out, and those two things happen to be uh, actually four. There are these two are uh, veins back here and these two veins back here. These are the pulmonary veins and they're bringing oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. Now, I want to tell you something real key because I almost messed up on something. I don't know how many of you caught it. You notice that I almost called these four structures back here arteries. I almost did. I came real close. If you rewind it, you'll see where I, I said uh, veins. OK. That's because of this problem we have associated with colors. We tend to say, oh, it's red, so it must be an artery. Eh, wrong. That happens in the systemic circuit of the body, which is all the arteries and veins uh, going out throughout the rest of the body. But the arteries and the veins that connect the heart to the lungs, those blood vessels are a little different. So that's why you have a pulmonary trunk that's an artery, but he's blue, and you have pulmonary veins, which are red, and anywhere else in the body, that would be the exact opposite. So don't memorize colors. That is a no-no. Never memorize the colors on the heart, or you're going to miss that on the test. What you do is you think about what kind of blood is flowing through each vessel. For example, with the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary trunk contains deoxygenated blood so it should be blue whereas pulmonary veins contain oxygenated blood it just got back from the lungs so they should be red now let's pop this guy open and hopefully he can make some sense and hopefully the camera will be okay I've been having trouble with this black background the camera doesn't seem to really like it we pop this open you're gonna notice something real weird you're going to notice that it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't seem like it makes much sense at all. Let's get a little closer in here. So what exactly am I looking at? Well, first of all, you, you've got a heart that's that's been opened here. And if we were to follow blood as it was flowing into the heart, you got to understand something. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the direction that blood flows through the heart to the lungs and then back to the heart but always remember that as instructors and as teachers we kind of mess you guys up on the heart because we tell you oh yeah the heart is a pump actually the heart is two pumps it's a left pump and a right pump because blood deoxygenated blood is coming in through the right side of the heart deoxygenated blood comes in through the superior and the inferior vena cava and they enter into a structure known as the right atrium once they enter into the right atrium this deoxygenated blood then passes through this small valve known as a tricuspid valve and then it passes into this area known as the right ventricle that blood is then passed through another valve called a pulmonary semilunar valve and then it passes on through the pulmonary trunk, which then passes through the pulmonary arteries and onto the lungs. Once it gains some oxygen, it then returns back to the heart through pulmonary veins. And once it enters in through pulmonary veins, it then comes in through the left atrium. And it passes from the left atrium through a bicuspid valve into a left ventricle. And then it looks like it disappears. But if I turn this slightly, you can see where it passes into the left ventricle and then into the through the aortic semilunar valve here. And then up through the aorta and then out to the body. Now, that's the quick and fast and dirty of it. So let's slow it down just a bit. So what's really happening is blood is entering into your right atrium and it's entering into your left atrium at the exact same time. Remember, whatever happens on the right side is happening on the left side at the exact same time. You need to remember four major chambers. There's a right atrium, 
and a left atrium, and then a right ventricle, and then a left ventricle. The right atrium and the left atrium are just like their namesake. Atrium means entryway or beginning entryway. It's, it's, it's where, uh, if you have an atrium in an old house, it's where you meet and greet people. Well, the atrium is where they receive, the heart receives blood. An atrium is a place where you receive guests. So the right and left atria are here. Their major jobs are to receive blood. That's why when you look at this heart model, you'll notice that these ventricles have lots of muscle in their walls. And then you look at the atria and you hardly see any muscle in their walls. That's because the atria, their, their muscle is not the primary way that blood exits the atria. Believe it or not, it's actually a vacuum that allows blood to leave the atria. We'll talk about that more a little later on in another video. So, so the atria, when they contract, they only contract and squeeze out mm, about 20% of the actual blood that was in there. Most of the blood in your atria doesn't come out through a contraction. It actually comes out through a vacuum force. So then the blood uh, has to pass through these two little uh, valves, and these valves are known as atrioventricular valves. Atrio, atria, ventricular, ventricles, valves. They have another name though. This one on the right side is known as a tricuspid valve. This one on the left side is known as a bicuspid valve. We have absolutely no clue as to why uh, they have three valves, three lips on the valve here and two lips on the valve there. They both do the exact same thing and they both open and close at the exact same time. And that lub dub sound that you're hearing when people are teaching you how a uh, um, how a heart sounds through a stethoscope, that lub sound is actually the sound of your tricuspid valves and your bicuspid valves closing. So after the atria fill up and these guys are closed, these guys then open and then the blood passes through into the right and left ventricles. Now, do you notice something about the walls of the right and left ventricle? You'll notice that the right ventricular wall is thinner than the left ventricular wall. And that's because the right ventricle does not have to be as powerful as the left ventricle because the right ventricle is pumping blood through the pulmonary semilunar valve, up through the pulmonary trunk, through the pulmonary arteries, and directly to the lungs, which are sitting right beside it. Whereas the left ventricle has to pump blood through the aorta and through the entire body. So yeah, I think that the left ventricle will have to be bigger and it would have to be stronger. And guess what? Both of them contract and eject blood at the exact same time. And then if you notice, their semilunar valves are right on top of one another. Look at that. There's the pulmonary semilunar valve right above it. There's the aortic semilunar valve right below it. Right there. So these semilunar valves, they, uh, if you notice that the tricuspid and bicuspid valves have strings, notice they have little drawstring like structures that, that allow the, uh, allow the tricuspid and bicuspid valves to open and close. Well, the semilunar valves, you'll notice they don't have such strings. These strings are known as chordae tendinae. Notice that there are no chordae tendinae on the semilunar valves. That's because these chordae tendinae open and close due to blood flow and pressure. So when these ventricles squeeze or contract, the blood forces its way through these valves and the pressure forces these two valves to open. Well, once these two valves open, then the blood flows through the uh, pulmonary trunk and through the aorta at the exact same time. Once all the blood has been ejected, and any blood tries to come back, the change in pressure inside of these ventricles causes the semilunar valves to close, and then you hear the dub. That's the second part of the lub dub sound. It happens to be these two valves closing, and then you have created an actual heartbeat. And that, my friends, is a very quick and dirty rundown of the heart.